I will be reading into your hearing Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. May God add a blessing to the hearing of his word. And I was given, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about. And this is Paul making a statement, wherefore. It is a statement. Why is he making this statement? Well, if you go back to Hebrews 11, you'll find out that is the hall of faith. It is the walk of faith. He began to explain in Hebrews 11, for by faith, through faith, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. We find out by the walk of faith that the elders obtained a good report. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith. By faith, Abe offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, that he may receive the promises offered up by his only begotten son. And God said, look over there, Abraham. There's a ram in the bush. Faith. By faith. Moses, when he was born, was hid three months by his parents. They stood on faith. Moses rather suffered the afflictions of the righteous than to be on the Egyptian side, to be a part of the world that is just uh, happiness, joy, just for a season. By faith, the walls of Jericho come tumbling down. The faith wall. The Bible said that the elders obtain a good report. These all obtain a good report through faith. The walk of faith. We find out that many of the uh, pioneers through the old up into through the New Testament has a faith walk and faith experience. You may even find in your own personal life that you have a faith experience. We find that Paul says here, wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. And the cloud of witnesses is through the hall of faith. Then he go on to say, let us lay aside. In other words, put it down. Hey, don't hold on to it. Drop it. Do, uh, hold on to the things that pertain to God, but lay aside the things that are a hindrance. We find out the hindrance is weight. Uh, weight is not necessarily a sin, but it's a hindrance. It can stop you. It can block you. It can prevent you from doing the will of God. It could be a hindrance when it's time for you to fast. It can be a hindrance when it's time to pray, a hindrance when it's time to attend church service, a hindrance when it's time to do the will of God. But sin, you say lay aside every weight, and sin is a transgression, an immoral act against God. It is against the divine law of God to do wrong, sin, sin, sin to be entangled with, the ungodliness, 
entangled with the worldliness. He said, lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us. And let us run the patience that the race that is set before us. Let us run patiently. Let us run with perseverance. Let us run with endurance. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Looking unto Christ. Well, I thought about in this Easter season, we are looking to Jesus. Jesus, we know that he died on the cross for your sins and my sins. I find out that Jesus is the greatest witness. We have it in the Hall of Faith in Hebrews 11, but Jesus is our perfect witness that walked on the earth and was tempted in every like manner. I began to think about before he even made it on the earth, Isaiah called and said unto him, called him Holy One of Israel. Isaiah said unto us, a child is born and a son is given. Jeremiah said he's a fountain of living water. He's like fire shut up in my bones. Ezekiel said he's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Job called him my redeemer. But God called him my only begotten son. I began to think about the songwriter said he was hung up for my hang-ups. He was hung up for all my wrongdoing. He was hung up over 2,000 years ago. So we find here that Paul say, lay aside every weight and sin. And looking unto Jesus, he's the author, he's the finisher. What do you mean that he's the author? He's the beginning before time was. And the finisher, he completed it. He completed it. How did he complete it? Well, I thought about, uh, I heard Tina Turner sing a song, What Love Got to Do With It. Well, I thought about God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The answer comes back. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. On Calvary, Jesus died for me. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, there to my heart was the blood applied. They nailed him to the cross. They put a nail through his hands. They nailed him through the side, and blood came streaming down. But he didn't finish it there. After he gave up the ghost, he hung his head down and said, Father, I commend my spirit into your hands. And after the third day, on the resurrection Sunday, the women went to the grave site. They went to the tomb looking for Jesus, but he was not there. He had risen just like he said. He has the key to death and to hell. He finished it when he rose again. He finished it on the cross. I just want to remind you, whatever situation you're in, whatever you're going through, remember Jesus died on the cross and was resurrected and had all power in his hands. And he left a message that greater works shall thee do. 
a greater work when you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God had raised them from the dead. Thy shall be saved. And when you are endowed with power from on high, you can lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. He said, greater works shall you do. Greater looking unto Jesus and the author, the finish of our faith, doing this resurrection season. I say to you out there in, the, in live stream, Look unto Jesus. Call on him. Whatever the situation is, if you're in sin, you can call on him, and he'll turn your situation around. He'll turn your life around. Don't let his death be in vain. Don't let his resurrection. He was hung up for our hang-ups. He was hung up to set us free. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. God bless you.